Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. We talk a lot about Synology in this channel and one thing that I always say, if you don't back up the data that's on your NAS, then your data is temporary. Something is going to happen, or at least you, sh you should be prepared for something to happen. And I've seen a lot of people with my own eyes, people that back up their devices, that snapshot their volumes, they do everything right. And when disaster strikes, they are panicking. It's like the end of basic training and the start of the war and they freak out. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this video. Just remember, if you've backed up your data, then 90% of this war has already been won by you. So join me in the computer and we'll see how to win the remaining 10%. Don't freak out. Join me. All right, guys, so we are at, at the computer and I have created a virtual DSM device so that we can play around and see how to recover from several disasters. Now we are going to take it one step at a time. We are going to start small and see how we can recover from partial data loss, for example, if someone accidentally deleted files or folders, and then we're going to step it up a notch and see how we can recover from a full-on disaster. I'm going to simulate a disaster by reverting to a snapshot that has none of the data on this virtual machine. And if you stick around towards the end of the video, I'm even going to show you how you can recover your NAS settings so you wouldn't have to recreate them in case you need to recover your entire NES. But let's start off small. Mind you, there are a lot of tools Synology provides for the purpose of backing up things, uh, tools for backing up computers to your NES or your NES to another NES or your NES to a cloud service. There are tons of options. We are going to use snapshot replication and hyper backup. So let's start small. I have a shared folder I created and then I transferred some random files to simulate uh, a shared folder with, let's say, critical data. Now, let's say I have accidentally deleted some of the files right here. In fact, let's delete all of the files. And let's say this deletion was completely accidental. I can easily recover this data by using snapshot replication. Of course, you will have to go ahead and create a, a snapshotting schedule beforehand. I have already created, now this is not a tutorial on how to use snapshot replication. This is a tutorial on how to now recover data if you already configured snapshot replication. And in this case, we have snapshotting schedule already configured. So our shared folder is now empty. Someone accidentally deleted our entire content of the folder. We can easily recover the data by going to recovery right here, clicking on the shared folder you need to recover and then clicking on recover. I have several snapshots, so I'm going to take the latest snapshot possible, clicking on action and restore to this snapshot. I can take a snapshot before restoring. I'm not going to do that. I am going to restore the settings of the shared folder and clicking on OK. Click on close. Let's refresh the folder. And presto, all the data that was accidentally deleted is now right here. We can even do more fine grain recovery. For example, if I just delete one file, it will be the exact same process, but I can even dig a little deeper. Again, going to the recovery tab in snapshot replication, clicking on recover, going to the latest snapshot, and then clicking on browse. I can now select the file that I have deleted and simply drag and drop it to the shared folder. Let's go ahead and close this window, refresh the window, and as you can see, the file is right here. That's great. That's our partial 
disaster recovery. Now, we are going to simulate a, a, a very catastrophic uh, disaster. I am going to show you that I already created an hyper, a hyper backup task to backup my data to an off-site Synology NAS. So now that I have this backup task already created and running, 90% of the war has actually been won. But now let's simulate the actual disaster. I'm going to go to my primary NAS that the virtual DSM device is running on. I'm going to shut it down. All right, now it's powered off. I'm going to revert it to a snapshot that I have taken before any data was inside this shared folder. All right, so the virtual machine has been restored or reverted to a snapshot that does not contain any of the data we had before. This simulates a situation where you maybe your NAS caught on fire, you had to buy a new one or you got hit by ransomware, your entire data was uh, encrypted, you had to maybe factory reset your device. You had a catastrophic disaster, you are now facing your NAS minus all the data that was on it. Let's open the file station. You can see that the shared folder is completely empty. The data is gone. In fact, let's take it a step further. Let's completely delete the shared folder. All right, so the entire shared folder is gone. Now, if you remember, I told you that if you've backed up your device to an off-site location or a location that is recoverable, you've already won 90% of the war. Now you just need to win the remaining 10%. All right, so let's open Hyper Backup. Initially, it will just, because the task li list is empty, it's going to automatically ask me to create a backup task. I'm going to close out of this one for now. And we are going to click on the restore button, data. And now this list is also empty. We need to restore from existing repositories and select remote NAS device. Click on next. Again, enter the details of the remote NAS device you have backed up to. Click on login. If needed, go ahead and provide a username and password. Again, select a shared folder that holds your backup data. It automatically, fo automatically found mine. Let's click on next. At this point, I do not want to restore system configuration. I'm going to do it as a separate step towards the end of the video. Let's click on next. Let's select the shared folders that we want to restore. Click on Next and click on Done. This will take some time, again, according to the connection speed and the amount of data that this shared folder holds. Let's close out Hyper Backup, go to File Station. Here's the shared folder. It has been recreated. All right, so as you can see, our data is fully restored, but there are a few steps we need to do to make sure our data is continuing to be backed up. This is not the time for a sigh of relief. We'll open, we'll reopen Hyper Backup. It will again provide us with a wizard to create a backup task. We need to go ahead and do it. Select a remote NAS device. This time, select relink an existing task. Remember, we already had a task running. We just want to reintroduce this task to the new restored NAS. So again, provide the details of your remote NAS. Select the shared folder that holds the backup data. Click on next. Click on yes. Select the shared folder you want to continue to backup. Click on next on whatever settings you see fit, on the schedules you see fit according to your preference. Backup rotation, again, whatever you feel most comfortable with. All right, so now the task has been recreated and the restored data will continue to be backed up regularly just as before. So now is the time for 
a partial sigh of relief actually and I told you that towards the end of the video I'll show you how to make sure you wouldn't need to recreate all the settings of your NAS and that's very easy to do if you go to control panel and update and restore you can see the configuration backup tab right here enable it if it's not enabled on your NAS enable it I'm comfortable with auto encryption but you can select uh, other options if you see fit click on apply if you haven't logged into your Synology account on your NAS you will probably be now presented with a pop-up window asking you to log into your Synology account but from this point forward your NAS configuration will be backed up regularly to your Synology account meaning that I can now even restore my settings let's go ahead and change a setting Let's select manually configure a DNS server just for the lack of a better, better idea. We have now changed a setting that is different now from our backup. So let's go ahead to our backup and restore, update and restore, sorry. Configuration backup, click on restore. If you need to restore uh, your, your NAS settings, restore from my Synology account, click on next. You can see that I have several devices backing up, but I'm selecting the device that is relevant for this video. Click on next. I'm going to select all the configurations. I am going to overwrite conflicting settings just to make sure that everything that was configured before is now being overwritten if needed to, uh, uh, on other settings. Click on done. This section will probably overwrite a lot of settings, but this is exactly what we are aiming for. So click on yes. All right, for me, it took about three minutes. Make sure you give it enough time to work. The configurations have been restored. I'm getting a dialog, bo dialog box. I'll click on okay. Let's click on refresh page. That's great. All right, so now let's see if our DNS settings that we changed have now been reverted back open control panel network and as you can see indeed the dns setting the dns server that i manually entered has now been overwritten with the settings that were backed up so that's a, a third win thank you guys for watching i don't know i hope to see you all on our next video if you like this video please give it a like so that more people will be able to watch it and i'll see you guys all on the next video Bye bye